All right, live. Yo, what's good, Knicks Nation? Welcome back to another Game of the Week preview. And of course, we have to preview this game. The New York Knicks are going up to Boston. They're shipping up to Boston to take on none other than, none other than the Boston Celtics. And, do, and we got to bring on Noah Dalzell to break down this game. She covers the Celtics for the Celtics blog. You know, one the longest standing Celtics blogs out there. So make sure to lock in, tap in, hit that thumbs up button for the squad. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And make sure to support our sponsor, underdogfantasy.com. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. Noah, how are you feeling today? What's going on? I'm great. Thanks so much for having me. And I will start off by saying that the Knicks are my second favorite team in the NBA. Ooh. And I don't, I'm not pandering. It's the truth. So, so it's great to be on. I'm excited for tomorrow's game. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, I, I love talking to hoops fans and just who love the game of basketball. As I told you uh, behind, uh, you know, off, off air is that I live in Boston. You know, the, some of the Knicks, Knicks nation over here likes to joke that, you know, this is my hometown, although I don't really qu- claim my hometown. It's my wife's hometown. Okay. I just live out here. You know, it's just where an address is, is where they ship my mail to. You know, it is what it is. You see, I got the Wolf Clyde Frigid jersey behind me. Got all my Knicks paraphernalia out here. So it is what it is. But before, since you're, you know, your second favorite team is the Knicks, I got to ask, what have you thought about the New York Knicks this season? Yeah, I mean, so it's not like I'm I haven't been a, a lifelong Knicks fan at all. So it just I think this this current team is really cool. And I think the way that they've approached the season, you know, ton of adversity between all the injuries, Julius Randle, OG Ananobi, um, to still have the record that they've had and to also just be so competitive in every single game. Like I feel like they're just you, as a basketball fan, you just have to admire the toughness and tenacity that they've played with. Jalen Brunson's one of the most exciting players in the NBA right now. I think Josh Hart is one of the most exciting role players in the NBA right now. So there's just a lot of, a lot of good things going on over there. Um, I was at Madison Square Garden when the Celtics were there, you know, a couple months ago. Um, great atmosphere. So it's just, yeah, just a lot, a lot to be excited about. I think as a Knicks fan. Oh, for sure. You know, as we've seen the last couple of games, we've had an exciting win against the Milwaukee Bucks, where it was just Jalen Brunson and the Nova Nova squad plus everybody else on this roster. It just feels like Jalen Brunson and, and the Knicks at this point, as we can call like the band name, and they went in two or not went into, they just went against Milwaukee and just beat the brakes off of Dame and Giannis. And then you have yesterday's game where they beat the Chicago Bulls. And so right now they're positioned as the third best team in the East right now, third in the Eastern Conference. And we have another important game tomorrow against these Celtics because, you know, we're trying to make sure that we can stay in the top three. We want home court advantage. We, you know, we don't, we we lost a tiebreaker to the Orlando Magic. They won that series against us. Same thing as the Indiana Pacers. And there's just still a lot of maneuvering. We won't really know what it feels like, what the playoff picture will look like until the season completely ends this weekend. So with that in mind, we're excited. We want, we want this game against the Celtics tomorrow. And give me a little insight on, on the Celtics season right now. How have you, you know, I know this is, I know you've covered, you cover the team. Tell us a little bit about the Celtics season thus far. Yeah, it's been a pretty electric Celtics season, if I if I can say that. So I think, first of all, it's a very unique situation in that they've locked down the best record in the league for weeks now. Um, so effectively, this last stretch here has just been like completely meaningless basketball as it relates to the outcome of games, mm-hmm. uh, which would make you think maybe they'd be dropping more of these games, but they've actually been quite effective with that. Um, I think they've been playing kind of different games with different internal goals for each game of certain metrics they want to hit and uh, trying out different coverages and, and letting different guys get run. Um, so they've had to kind of find ways to keep this interesting, uh, which is obviously very different than what most other teams are experiencing right now that are vying for a playoff positioning or, you know, trying to get into the playoffs or play in or whatever it is. So um, it's a it's kind of a unique circumstance. But this is a Celtics team that has been dominant all season long. Um, every time they drop a game or two, it's like you hear all the national narratives. It's a whole, you know, they're weak, they're soft, they choke, and then they rattle off another nine wins in a row. And so, you know, they're I think they're 62 and 17 right now and, you know, mm-hmm. could, could be a 65 win team if they win the next three, uh, which I don't know if they will. But, you know, they've been very, very historically dominant and just their point differential ranks up like po- top five or six ever as far as how much they're winning games by overall. Um, and so. I, you know, they've looked really good so far. They've had a lot of like guys in and out of the lineup, mostly like knickknack and, inj- you know, nagging injuries, not anything substantial. So I don't think I'm like, I don't think they've really had a serious injury bug the way that a lot of other teams like the Knicks have. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but they they haven't really missed a beat when they have guys out of the lineup. So you have, you know, you're resting Porzingis and Brown one night, like other guys just step up. That's just kind of the the nice thing about having so much talent on the roster. For sure. And it's what we like, it's what we like about the New York Knicks too, is that we have enough depth, right? Yeah. Uh, where, you know, we, as you mentioned, we didn't have Julius, we didn't have Mitch for a bit as well. We didn't have OG, but yet we're still here. We're talking about a team that's third right now where you have Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, uh, Dante DiVincenzo, Miles McBride, Isaiah Hartenstein. You could talk about Precious Achua and everybody else who have just stepped up to the occasion and helped this Knicks team be in the position that they are right now. You could talk about that for the Celtics, the way you're talking about the depth of that roster. But, you know, something that's interesting that came across everyone's timeline at this point, and I'm sure it came across your shout out to Keith Smith, who has been, uh, you know, who's a friend of the show. Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Al Horford, Christos Porzingis, Jason Tatum, and Xavier Tillman are all questionable for tomorrow's game versus the Knicks. What did you think as soon as you saw that come across the timeline? Finally, <laughs> like, I think, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of people, you know, around the team are kind of, you know, you saw what happened last night with Giannis goes down, you know, kind of on a no, weird kind of no contact injury. Hopefully he's okay and back in the lineup soon. But I think Celtics fans are just kind of thinking, you know, it would really suck right now if someone got hurt playing a basketball game that has no mm-hmm. outcome. Right. Um, and so, you know, you, you weren't going to start doing it three weeks ago because that's, mm-hmm. you know, you don't want to lose rhythm. And I, I'm sure the league would not love that either. Um, but not surprised that this is the lineup they're rolling out for tomorrow. Um, I know because it's a national TV game, they can't rest multiple all-stars. And so, I mean, they have all have injuries attached to them. I don't know how that's going to work, but um, I'm, I'm probably half of those guys will play and half of them won't. That's just the way that they've been kind of going about it, listing, listing the questionables. And then usually they pick, I don't know what the, the logic is, but they'll pick some to sit and some to play. Um, but I will just say, even you, you, you cut half of those guys out, it's still a very good basketball team. So, Sometimes it's almost felt like they're better because like maybe there's like more touches for everybody or there's a little bit more energy going and knowing that like guys have bigger opportunities. But yeah, I don't think you're going to see you see them struggle just because they're resting a few of those. That is definitely like the case when we saw the Knicks trade RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly because those two guys for as good as they are, they require touches as well. And then once yeah. you move both of them and you get OG Ananobi here, Precious Achua, guys who don't need to be on ball as much. We just saw the Knicks offense just open up. So totally understand that concept for the Celtics where, you know, you kind of lose talent based on like minor injuries, resting, whatever the the case may be. And then you just watch the, the flow just seem a little bit better. But let's talk about the Celtics like when they are healthy, right? Because the, as you as you mentioned, there is just – the national media talks about how it's it's boom or bust for this team at this point, just because you get Christos Porzingis, you traded Marcus Smart, you know, the Damian Lillard trade, you now opened up for Drew Holiday to become a Celtic as well. You have the best defensive backcourt in the NBA with Drew and Derek White. And then you talk about how modern this team is, where Christos is the stretch big, and you just open up everything for Brown and Tatum just to attack the lanes. Is it? Is it boomer bust this season? Like, do they have to go to the NBA finals? Do they have to win it all? What do you say about that for the Celtics this season? Yeah, I hesitate to say that ever about a team just because it's so hard to win a championship that it's hard to say, like, if you didn't get there, you did something horribly wrong. Um, Are fans, is the organization going to be satisfied with anything other than a championship? No. Um, That has probably been the case for the last few years, so it's not unique to this year. Um, I, I will say like there's two different ways that this could go if it doesn't go well. Like there's a a seven game series against the Nuggets that's really high level and Jokic is just too phenomenal then and and that's why the Celtics lose. I think in that case you run it back next year knowing that you were right there. Um, and then there's an, anything other than that pretty much. Like if you're losing in the Eastern Conference, I think that would be seen as a big collapse. If you're losing you know, in seven, even to, you know, really any of these teams in the Eastern Conference, no, no offense to Eastern Conference, but I think there's just this feeling that the Celtics have that they've just been so ahead of the rest of the pack that uh, not making it out would be pretty shocking. Um, I don't personally feel that just because I, I just have seen crazier things happen in the NBA. And I also think that there's a lot of really talented teams. You never know how injuries are going to go, knock on wood. You never know just who's going to catch fire, who's not. So I think there's just a lot of X factors, but uh, certainly that's the sentiment around this basketball team right now is that they are making the finals and they better make the finals. And, um, you know, they, they should win the finals too. Although I think Denver makes a very strong case as well. Denver definitely does make a very strong case. It just feels like they're cruising out in the West right now and they're just waiting for the playoffs to start. 
But for the Celtics to take it to the next step, you know, there's also been a lot of questions about Joe Missoula as a head coach this season. He was under fire last year for, you know, just the Eastern Conference Finals against Miami. Do you feel like he is course corrected this season? Do you think he's improved as a head coach? What are your thoughts about Joe this season overall? Yeah. First of all, I think the the Joe's role in that series is a little overblown at points. Mm. Um, and I think that's just like the way we talk about NBA coaches in general, like the way we fire NBA coaches and, you know, you just hire a new one and then you recycle the same four people over and over again. So, you know, I think that's just, just, just a note on that. I think there was a lot of other issues going on necessarily and a Miami team that was playing out of its mind in, in a lot of ways. Um, but this year you're seeing a different Joe Missoula and you're seeing a guy that is a lot more confident um, that has a staff that he's assembled, that he's put together, that he selected over the summer. He had the off season training camp time to put in place a system that he believes in that will be successful. Um, and so just from a media standpoint, you know, I wasn't in the press rooms last year, but from everything I saw, everything I hear, he's very different. He is, you know, much less defensive. I think he's had a pretty easy season from a media standpoint, just because they've been winning so much. Um, but he has this unique strength as a coach. Like I think sometimes people talk about him, like Joe Missoula is a weakness of the Celtics. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't view him as that. I view him as actually as an asset in a lot of ways and the ways that he's been able to get complete buy-in from every person on the roster so that even when you're missing four starters, like they're dominating basketball teams. Uh, guys like Peyton Pritchard, Sam Hauser, they come in, they are ready to go. You have other guys stepping in that haven't played all year. Like he's had that connection with one through 15 that I think has been unique. The big knock on him, and I, I can't really defend it because I haven't seen anything to change my mind on it just yet, is last possession of the game. Like, what are you going to draw up? Um, it just, we all know it's going to be a Tatum setback. So we just, anything other than that, I think would make people feel better about him and about the Celtics. And so that's the knock on him. It, it doesn't seem to be like something too complicated to fix, but, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know from your standpoint, if that's something that like, you know, from covering the Knicks, you see that same thing about the Celtics of like last shot, everybody knows what it's going to be. It's not going to go well. I don't know how, how prominent that is outside of like Boston, but it certainly is the feeling around here. With regards to like Tatum having to be that guy or like Brown has to be that guy, more so Tatum than Brown though. Yeah, it's not even about him being that guy. It's more like there's been multiple cases this year and last year too where they're down by one with, you know, 10 seconds to go. And it's like the look that you're getting is a low quality shot. It's like a fadeaway dribble out the clock, three pointer. Yes. Um. So, and I think, you know, it's 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 not the Celtics are the only team that are doing that, but that's to me the biggest weakness with this group and with, with Missoula is like that, that we don't have like these really good out of timeout plays that are at the end of games or like, you know, the last few minutes, the pace is really poor. Like that's mm -hmm. been the biggest challenge. And I don't know some of that's on him. Some of that's on the stars, but um, outside of that, I think he's actually been like a really great coach this year. I, I think it goes down. It, it depends on like, it changes game by game, right? I'm sure there's times where you're asking for Joe Mazzola to draw up something a little bit more creative to get Tatum or Brown that better look so that the works to their strengths. Right. And then there goes back to the player where like, you know, a play breaks down. What's their what's their tendency to go to for a shot? Tatum likes those long twos, fadeaway jumpers where it's like, dude, you know, the whole complaint for him has been get downhill, get to the rack, or look for a good open three because that's just essentially how the game is now. And we see that on a next standpoint too. Uh, the difference is that where it comes down to Jalen Brunson, it doesn't really matter what Jalen Brunson does because it just feels like anything, whether it's a set play for him or if the play breaks down, he just knows how to get to where he wants to get to on the court and just get an open look for himself. So if it's JB, which it nine out of 10 times usually is for the last shot, doesn't really matter. It, like Tibbs could probably draw up something. It's like, okay, it's probably going to break down. It may not break down. Who knows? Uh, but JB's going to get a good shot for the Knicks when he gets to that point. Uh, when it's Julius Randle, and like we saw some of this last year too, where there was trying to be a trade off between, you know, let it be Julius, let it be Brunson. And then it just became all Brunson towards the end of last season, there was a shot against the Chicago Bulls last year where, you're, where you see Julius take a long two, and it's like he, you know, worked the clock. I think there was like 10 to 15 seconds left, held it, and then just took a baseline fadeaway jumper. It's like, that's what we drew up. That doesn't make any sense. So why would it be? And that's where you could say, is that a Tibbs thing? Is that a player thing? Like, it could be both, but the Celtics are not just the only team that deals with those type of questions. Knicks have dealt with those type of questions. I think if you go to any fan base, they'll tell you that, Hey, why are we getting this type of look? Why don't we create something a little bit more, you know, fluent? Why do we get, create something that's a little bit more, you know, team friendly, you know, just even if it's going to somebody else, why don't we just look for something that's an open shot? So definitely not a Celtics thing, but I could totally see 
and especially being out here in Boston and why go play pickup ball. I just talked to people who are fans of fans of the Celtics. It's like Tatum taking these fadeaway shots. And it's like, I don't know, man, we're still waiting, you know? And it's even like when you go to like last year, you see Marcus Smart taking like a last shot. It's like, why is Marcus Smart always taking the last shot? Why is it always ending up in his last hand when it touches JB's and JT's hands? You know, that's how I look at it as. Yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying. To me, it's been less about um, who takes the last shot. It's more about just like the quality. And you're right, like Jalen Brunson gets creates really great looks. Like that's the thing, it's more of a strength of his, you know. So a lot of it is on on the player, but you just, there's so many weapons on this on the Celtics team that I think sometimes down the stretch, it's frustrating to see Porzingis and the not even be involved in the action or Derek White, who's statistically one of the clutchest players in the NBA this season, you know, not really be involved. So part a lot of people are wondering, like, is it going to change in the playoff? Maybe he's just like kind of keeping it close to his chest. Um, I'm not smart enough to know if that's how complicated he's thinking about it. So um, we'll see. But I, I do. I just would say, like, in general, he has been a very good coach for this team. And uh, there's just complete buy in. And I think the staff that he surrounded himself with has been you know phenomenal as well. So, um, yeah, you think that 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 has generally not been like a weakness. And I think sometimes he gets knocked on just because of the way he got the job and last year and he was young and mm-hmm. defensive and the media and things. But um, I think you're seeing a guy that's a little bit different this year. Salute to Knicks and Nation. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. We are previewing the New York Knicks facing the Boston Celtics tomorrow. The Knicks will be in Boston at TD Garden to take on the Boston Celtics at 7.30 p.m. With me on the other side is Noah Dalzell. She covers the Celtics for Celtics blog. Make sure to go check out her work there and make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. Okay. So, Noah, I ha- let's get into this game and, and, and break this thing down because even though we don't know who's going to be playing tomorrow, it just feels like, you know, both teams still have something to play for. For the Knicks, obviously, it comes down to positioning. For the Celtics, even though you want to rest players, it just feels like you want to go into the postseason strong. And I don't know, you could tell me what you think of it. You have a good, you know, opportunity to play against the Knicks. You just played against the Bucks. Last night, it feels like maybe for the Celtics, they want to play against playoff caliber teams just to stay in rhythm. So that way they're they're ready for postseason. But you let me know what you think about that. Yeah, it's hard to say what, what we're going to see tomorrow from the Celtics. You know, I think they're not, I don't think they're going to be overly concerned with the outcome of tomorrow's game. Um, and so maybe that lends itself to a Knicks win because the Knicks are more, are more concerned kind of with positioning here. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, I think the more guys they rest, the probably the better their odds are. You know, last night we had a weird outcome in, in Milwaukee where there was a combined two free throws that were attempted between both teams. First time in history where a team has not attempted free throws. Mm. Uh, and so I don't know how much of that was the officiating, how much of that is just not, probably not looking for contact. I think probably a little bit of both. Um, but I think if they they actually move down to and giving you know Pritchard the start, Hauser the start, some of these guys that have played really well in limited minutes, um, we could actually see a pretty good basketball game. Uh, maybe even more so than giving the starting five a usual run and, and having them kind of play, playing cautiously or you know limited minutes. Um, so I think you know it'll probably be a competitive game. They've been exceptional at home. Uh, I think they're they've lost three games all season at home, um, and so it's mm. been. Yeah, that's been it's pretty much been a guaranteed a guaranteed win for the fans that that buy tickets to go to TD Garden, um, and so just off of that alone, I wouldn't bet against them. Um, and but you know, I also think the Knicks are going to be playing really hungry. And every time I watch the Knicks, and I don't watch every single game, but every time I watch the Knicks, I'm always impressed with uh, the way they approach games and the way they kind of are, always feel like they're in it, even if they're not in it. Um, so I think it'll be a very competitive one. And I can just say on the Celtic side, Peyton Pritchard gets up for these matchups. He gets up for extended opportunities. He gets up for national TV playing against guys like Brunson and, and hard and DiVincenzo. So I think that, um, I wouldn't, I would, I think I, I sense a big game from him coming. Okay. Okay. And you know, with that, like, as, as you already said, Knicks, they got something to play for. Um, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's game. I really want the Knicks yeah. to come out here being victorious. You mentioned that the Celtics have only lost three games at home this season, which feels like it's a record. If it's not, I don't know many teams that just don't lose at home like that. That's insane. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow's game. And a key stat that is, you know, up in like, I guess up in the air for how it can go, how this game will turn out is points off of turnovers, right? So the Knicks right now over the last 10 games have been thriving. They're number one right now in the league throughout these past 10 games at scoring off of turnovers on the other hand boston who we already know has a solid defensive core uh 
They're number two right now over the last 10 games at preventing teams from scoring off of turnovers. So it feels like rubber's about to meet the road at this point to see which team will thrive in this one. I, and I think this will be the determining factor where who will win tomorrow's game. What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, just in general, when the Celtics take care of the ball, which they have done at a high level this season, they're, they've been really hard to beat. Um, and so certainly that that'll be a priority. Joe Mizzou often has talks about the margins and he's, that's, you know, points off turnovers, rebounding. They've struggled a little bit on the glass. I can see that being a, a bit of a challenge. I know it has been in the past with the Knicks. The Knicks are one of the top rebounding teams in the league still, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I know that they're back kind of a more full strength on, on that regard. So I can see that being a little bit of a challenge, especially if they sit some of the, some of the, the big guys on the roster. Um, so certainly like that'll be a factor. I think to me, it's just it's so hard to know what kind of game we're even looking at, but you have the ball in Pritchard's hands. You know, he usually takes quite good care of the ball. Derek White takes good care of the ball. So I think like the availability of those guys will help ensure that, but uh, they've managed to find a way to play like a very free flowing offense where uh, they're always kind of looking at different options. There's a lot going on. It's not like they're, they're playing conservatively, but they have been really good at not turning the ball over. Um, and I think it's just been a huge point of emphasis for them because that hasn't always been the case in the Tatum Brown era. Now, Another area of this game where I think will be interesting is that the Knicks have been solid when it comes to second chance opportunities and points in the paint. And as of right now, and this is through even through the last 10 games, it's been strong. Boston has been just kind of, you know, falling back on that end. And I just want to know, is there a reason why it seems like Boston is not protecting the paint as well? Is it just like just through this, like just a wall, just because they've already established that they're going to be in the playoffs or is it like this is just one of their weaknesses? Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of a lull. Um, their defensive numbers have have dropped a little bit in the last few weeks. Um, I don't think it's anything more substantive than the fact that they're also trying like a bunch of different things on defense. Like every game, you they have a couple different zones that they're attempting, and sometimes the zones look pretty brutal. But they're like they push through for like the six minute stretch that they were going to do the zone for. Um, so I think you have to consider like they're viewing these games as experiments and as an opportunity to try different things and. Um, I do think that sometimes impacting like their defensive ratings at the end of games or, um, you know, making it look like certain things are a struggle where they're not actually a struggle. They're more uh, an attempt at something that they're probably never going to run when it actually matters because it didn't go that well. Um, and so, like, for example, like I was in Atlanta for the the two games they lost to the Hawks. Um, mm-hmm. And in that game, you know, you had they were switching on everything one through five and Porzingis was switching on to DeJounte Murray. It was going horribly in overtime. It was like a hard watch because you're like, why are you still switching on him? He was torching Porzingis. And after the game, we asked Mazul about it. And he was like, we're, we were practicing one through five switches today because like that's what we were doing today. And like, it doesn't really matter, you know? Um, whereas I think for, you know, if you were vying for playoff positioning, maybe you were not going to try it out of defensive coverage that wasn't working as much. So it's hard to know how much of that is like a cover for when things don't go well. But that has been the message around this team over the last few weeks of like, we're trying out a bunch of different things, like everyone relax kind of. Um, and so when things don't go well, I think there's something easy to point to. But generally speaking, I mean, they've still been winning the vast majority of their games. Like I, they had won a bunch in a row until they dropped this most recent one in Milwaukee. Um, and, you know, they've been stringing together wins regardless. But I think that's why like they're, some of their numbers from you know a month ago were, were looking a little bit more solid. Interesting. So you're telling me that Missoula goes out there and uses some of these games as just practice just to say, oh, yeah. hey, let's just, it doesn't even matter. Like, I, I, are you telling me that the outcome of these games, like they matter, but not as much as long as like they're trying out a new defensive scheme or a new offensive scheme? Is that what you're telling me? Yeah. So, so I'll just say Missoula is like the most, one of the most competitive people like I've been around. Like he, he wants to win. It's not that he's sitting there being like, it doesn't matter. But I think they're viewing this as like, they're not going into the Knicks game tomorrow being like, we need this win. And like, that's first and foremost, the way that they will in two weeks when the playoffs start. And like, that's the mentality. Um, I think they're viewing this as like, okay, what are the things that we want to work on tomorrow? Who are the guys that we want to give extended opportunities to? Are there certain coverages that we haven't been as strong in that we want to try tomorrow to run for extended stretches? Like, those are the things that I think are are the, the more dominant conversations in the locker room right now. Not, we need to win this. We need to get this win really badly. Um, because like effectively there, there is no impact in, in not just tomorrow's game. Like this has been going on for, for seven games now, right. That none of these, you know, you could lose all these games and you will still have the best record in the NBA. Like that is so unique. I can't remember the last time that a team has such a big lead in the standings. And so that's, you know, yeah, they've been, they've been running things. And, and again, like after the Atlanta game, I was sitting in the press room and I was kind of like, really like that, you know, though that wasn't just like, it wasn't working, you know, it's, it's hard to sometimes like buy into it, but I do think that's what's happening. Um, I do think that like they're they're trying things out and like it makes sense because 
you know, what better way to practice new things than against other NBA teams that are dying to win because they need these wins really badly. Um, and when they have dropped the ball, but like the Atlanta games, like, it, you know, Porzingis said after the game, like, yeah, we, you know, it's hard sometimes to maintain that intensity against teams that are like dying to win when we, it really doesn't impact, you know, we don't need these wins as bad, but we can't go down that path because then we're going to build bad habits. So I think they have avoided building, building bad habits, but uh, I, I do think that kind of explains you some of the inconsistencies that we've seen. Interesting. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Well, salute to Knicks Nation once again. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. Once again, on the other side with me is none other than Do- Noah Dazelle. She covers the she covers the Boston Celtics for the Celtics blog. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button for the squad. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. And let me tell all of you about Underdog Fantasy right now, okay? I love using it. It's a lot of fun. You can do the pickums. You can do the drafts. As you know, Every post game, CP always announces uh, the draft, the, the the odds, how it's going between him, JD, and myself. And yes, CP for, failed to mention, okay, because we were trying to coordinate last night. We were trying to coordinate a three person draft, and we did do that. And let me check to see. I think I believe CP did end up winning that one, but there was a two person draft that CP didn't want to mention either. And that one, I was a victor. But anyway, that I, I, I digress. Anywho, make sure to use make sure to use the app. It's a lot of fun. You can go to Pickums. They offer for all sports, NFL, MLB, NBA, you know, NHL as well, even other sports like soccer and golf. And what you can do when it comes to the Pickums is that you can choose multiple players from different sports and make your make your sheet and put down however much you want to wager. $5 is usually what I go with. And you just choose higher and lower based on any statistical category that they give you. So for NBA, here's an example. They give you, let's say Jalen Brunson has 34 and a half points for tomorrow's game against uh, the Boston Celtics. I don't know if that's true. What's it going to be tomorrow? But let's say that's the line. You could choose either higher or lower. And that goes for any category. Rebounds, assists, points, rebounds, assists, the combination, therefore. And that goes for all sports. So you could choose the pickems. And if you want to do the drafts, all you need is two people at minimum to do a draft, and those are fun as well. So make sure to download the app Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Okay, back to the game. Noah, there's a key matchup for tomorrow's game that I'm looking at, though, okay? We could talk about all of like the situations, but I, I, if he does play, this is the match that I'm looking at, and it's none other than OG Ananobi. Versus Jason Tatum, just because I know Tatum has struggled a little bit, especially last season against OG Ananobi, and that to us OG is like the new, the new like we see the light, we see what is possible, what the possibilities are for having a legitimate three and D wing. And so, as soon as he joined this team, January, when everybody was for the most part healthy, I know we were still missing missing Mitch. Then we went fourteen and two during that month just because of OG's presence alone, just to put him on the best score, whether it be Anthony Edwards, whether it be whoever, you go down the whole list of names. OG has just been that phenomenal when it comes to defense. And honestly, even when he's been back, even when he came back from injury, the Knicks have done more winning when he's on the court than when he's been off the court. So I look at him as the important factor in tomorrow's matchup if Jason Tatum plays, because Tatum, we know who he is. He's one of the top players in the NBA right now, top 10. His ability to be a three-level scorer, get downhill, hit the mid-range, hit threes, can just be, you know. I, I know I read that article by Jared Weiss. He likes to play chess out there. As he says, he likes to make sure Jalen Brown, who likes to be the aggressor, starts the game, and he likes to pick his spots. And you definitely have seen that this season, the way that he's been approaching the game. And that's the one thing about Tatum you got to be on the lookout for is that you still have to make sure that you make him feel uncomfortable because if you don't, he will be able to get to his spots as well and make opponents pay. And so that's why I look at tomorrow's match between OG Ananobi and Jason Tatum as my key matchup for tomorrow's matchup between the Knicks and the Celtics. Give me your thoughts on that matchup. Yeah, I think it's a good one. Um, I'm always intrigued by how OG Ananobi is able to impact guys that seemingly are impossible to guard and he finds a way to, to get get under their skin. And and Jason Tatum is in that category. I think he's obviously a superstar. He's a phenomenal player, but he can get impacted. You know, like you, there's coverages and there's people that that do bother him. Um, and so, yeah, I always, I think that's a, it's a great matchup to look out for. Um, I don't think Tatum's going to play tomorrow, honestly. Like that's my mm. in that he's probably not going to. Um, but, you know, if he does, I would, I'll anticipate definitely watching that one. And over the years, I think OG's done a pretty good job on him compared to most other wing defenders in the NBA. I think the other matchup to watch is Derek White is definitely playing tomorrow. He's, I think mm. he's the only person not on the injury report that's of the, 
of the top six guys. So I'm curious to see if, you know, he's on Brunson, how that matchup looks. I don't know that they necessarily would use him as the primary defensive option on Jalen, you know, during, you know, in a playoff series, for example, it's, uh, wouldn't be shocked if they put Drew Holiday on, or Drew Holiday or Jalen Brown has been actually usually getting the most difficult defensive matchups. Mm. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm curious to to see, you know, how Derek White does with that, but um, just because that's the only matchup I know for sure will happen because right now there's so much ambiguity. Um, but yeah, certainly OG, I think, I think he just completely elevates this Knicks team and he's shown that in the limited time he's been on the court. So uh, just the way that he, you know, they, that, you know, when, when we were in Madison Square Garden a couple of weeks ago, he wasn't there and you could tell his absence was quite impactful. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And look, if it's, if it's not Tatum and if Brown is playing, it might be, it's, I would assume that either one is playing yeah. tomorrow. If one of the other is out, if not, then OG on Jalen Brown would be the answer. But let's just say for the fun of games that both of them will be available tomorrow. Another key matchup that I'm looking at then is Josh Hart going against Jalen Brown, because I feel like. Josh Hart's physicality, his strength, his hustle, his effort. He would be the guy that you want to use for Jalen Brown, who plays a physical brand of basketball. You know, he likes to play bully ball, get downhill, you know, use his shoulder to create shots in the mid range as well. That's a guy who I'm looking at for Josh Hart. To, that would be his assignment for tomorrow's matchup. And I think that would be a key, a key, key, like key matchup as well. Yeah, and just like match up, I think the rebounding matchup. Like, I, you know, I, I hate when Josh Hart gets 15 rebounds against the Celtics or like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like I love Josh Hart. I think he's awesome. Every team needs someone like that, but it's so frustrating to watch because it looks like just like sheer effort sometimes. Um, and I think it probably is predominantly effort. It definitely is sheer effort. <laughs> yeah. And so I think like to me, you know, yes, yes, they can mix around coverages. Yes, they can experiment things, but like you don't want to not play hard. And I actually didn't watch the entirety of last night's game because I was covering the main Celtics game. Uh, which had more actually more meaning to the to the organization right now than the Celtics game did. Interesting. Uh, but from what I saw online and just from the highlights that I was able to catch, I think effort was a little bit of a, a factor in last night's loss to the Bucks. And so you don't want to finish out the season with a couple of poor effort showings and then think you're going to turn it on and next thing you know you're facing Joel Embiid in the first round because the standings are weird. So um, I hope that yeah, I hope they come out with intensity because I know the Knicks are going to for sure. Um, and so that just that as a as a thing to follow for sure. Absolutely. Look, the Knicks are not going to stop and they're going to want this win as look, I, I, even if you're telling me that the Celtics want to rest players, you know, they have to be thinking about playoff implications too. And like what happens if they beat the Knicks and other teams that they're thinking about because it, it for them, I don't know if it really matters to the Celtics, but I'm sure they would like a certain road to the playoffs too, where, you know, through the playoffs where it's easier in their favor and not necessarily have to play like the most physical teams up front first and maybe wait and save them for the final, you know, the final boss of a video game, you know, before like you go off to the next challenge. That's just my opinion though. But the next, fa the next matchup I'm looking at too, and this is my X factor. These, th this is my X factor for tomorrow's game. And I know with KP out, you know, and we don't know what Al Hor is out. Do we know if either KP or Al Horford are for sure out for tomorrow's game? I think they're, everybody's questionable. Nobody's out. No, everybody's questionable. Okay. Because my key factor for my X factor, I should say, my X factor for tomorrow's game is Mitchell Robinson, just because with him back, you talk about rebounding for this team, which is impact, which is very crucial against a Celtics team that can play top tier defense and their offense can just be, you know, lights out and getting every offensive rebound, getting every defensive rebound. It is so important for this next team, especially without Julius, because you need to make sure that you get quality possession. So having Mitchell Robinson coming off the bench tomorrow, he's been working his way back up after having ankle surgery, you know, last night against the Bulls, he played 20 minutes. So he's getting there. He's getting to that ability to play the same amount of minutes that he did prior to the injury. But Mitchell Robinson will be my X factor for tomorrow's game because the way he can guard the perimeter, just guard the pick, pick and roll. Like I said, his rebounding is so key. And for a Celtics team that can be so prolific on offense, you're going to need everybody on defense that is capable of slowing things down. And with OG, Miles McBride, Dante DiVincenzo, Mitchell Robinson, Josh Hart, those are the guys that I'm looking at to like really hone in and try to slow the Celtics down and make sure that we can still have a ball game tomorrow. Yeah, certainly. And I, I do think Porzingis' weakness is like the more physical menacing on the glass bigs like like a Mitchell Robinson um and so from my standpoint like how is how, how are the Celtics going to respond to someone like that if he is available in particular if Al Horford's out which you know might be the case 
Um, although they both sat out last night. So I think that one or both of them will play tomorrow. Um, and so, but yeah, I think a guy like Mitchell Robinson has certainly hurt the Celtics in the past. He's terrorized a lot of opponents. And so between him and Isaiah Hardenstein and, and Josh Hard, like just all, all the, you know, really good rebounders that they have, it's not a strength of Porzingis. And I think sometimes he can be a little bit exploited there. And so it becomes like a team effort that everybody needs to kind of prioritize rebounding. Um, and they do, they do rebound well as a team. Um, but yeah, those kinds of one-on-one -on -one matchups, I think even the Clint Capella gave him a lot of trouble in Atlanta. So I think there's like certain elements of like his physicality being, you know, it's always been a weakness of his. I, I don't think it's nearly as much as it used to be, uh, but it's still not like an ideal matchup for him. Like he matched up with Chet Holmgren last week. That was like the perfect matchup for Porzingis. He enjoyed that mm -hmm. very much. I'm uh, sure. But, yeah. <laughs> who, who, who's the Celtics X factor for tomorrow's game? I know it's tough to say because yeah. of all the injury stuff, but let's just say like, okay. You can give me, I'll, I'll be fair and say, give me both options for a fully healthy Celtic squad and for a non fully healthy Celtic squad. Um, Fully healthy Celtic squad. I would say maybe Jalen Brown. He's had a couple of off nights. Mm -hmm. He hurt his left hand um, a couple of weeks ago. He has a strain and he looked like he was grabbing at it a lot. So um, to me, it's like, if he can, you know, we want to make sure that he's healthy and want to make sure that he's playing confidently. And, you know, the whole left hand thing obviously has been a big storyline, but he's actually been really effective with his left hand this year. So just seeing how he's able to put a game together, he struggled last night. Um, and then I would say more realistically, because I, I think I, I expect him to probably sit this one out. Um, I would say just the, the Celtics bench, like there's, you know, what, what becomes challenging is when you, you know, when you took, take all those guys out now you move up Pritchard and Hauser and the guys that have actually been used to playing a lot to the starting lineup. And now you have a lot more unknown guys on the bench. So I think a guy like Tillman, for example, who's played more extended run, but we're still seeing a lot of different, you know, he, he got pretty exposed last night, I think by Brooke Lopez and Giannis and that bigger front court without Porzingis and Al Horford. So if you're mm -hmm. sitting those guys out again and he's playing, like, how are you going to match the Knicks size? So yeah, it's a little tough. I think there's a lot of uncertainty around tomorrow's game. That, that as soon as that I saw that injury report, I was like, that's a bummer right before I'm about to go on this on this on this show. But uh, <laughs> I think just in general, um, just maybe effort and intensity is maybe the not a person, but but an X factor for what we're gonna see tomorrow. You're not gonna tell me Lou Cornette, you know, former New York Nick right there is gonna be the sole X factor for tomorrow's game. We're not gonna get that. <laughs> oh no, I I mean he hit a three pointer last night, so we are going to get a closer version maybe of, of Lou Cornette than, than we've seen, but that was his first three of like for a year, a year, you know, over a year now. But um, yeah, I mean, he, he'll probably play a sizable, sizable role tomorrow, depending on how things go. Okay. Okay. Well, there you have it. No, I appreciate you for coming on the show and, and helping me break this game down. But before I let you go, how do you well, give me the outcome for tomorrow's game? What do you think is going to happen? Ooh, um, is it so going to be close? Is it going to be like, you know, yeah. high scoring affair, full defensive effort. W what do you think? Okay. Okay. I think either the Knicks are going to win a close game or Celtics win by like 12. Mm. You have to pick one. Honestly, I think the Knicks might win. Um, I, I looked at that injury report. It looks a little substantive. So um, I think, yeah, I think the Knicks might win. And especially, yeah, maybe if I had to, if I had to pick a team right now, I'd say probably the, the Knicks squeeze, squeeze one out. Okay. But. I'm go I'm gonna go with the Knicks as well. I think it's gonna be um I think it'll be a close one. Uh just because look, I still think one of the one of the Jays are gonna be playing tomorrow. I don't think you're gonna get a fully decimated Celtics team for tomorrow's game. Um, but I do expect it to be a close one. I mean, if nobody plays, it could probably still be a close game. I mean, this is the thing is that when it comes to, you know, the next man next man up mentality in the league. People like to just show out when given the opportunity. It's either very good showing out and making it a close competitive game. So maybe as you talked about, Pritchard goes off and says, hey, let me show you what I can do in this league. This is why I'm worthy of the contract that I got. Or it can go completely south, and then it's like a, a washing. But I don't expect it to be a washing. Like I said, I do expect one of the Jays to play tomorrow. You, told, you said Derek White is still available for tomorrow. I expect it to be a game. I don't think that the Celtics just want to roll over for their own fan base since it's going to be there. It's going to be nationally televised. I feel like this is still going to be a competitive game. So I think the Knicks get this victory um, because it just seems like things are starting to click for them. But I, I do think it will be a close one as we've seen for the rest of these past few games that it hasn't been easy sailing for them. They have had to grind it out. So I'm going with the Knicks in this matchup. So and no, I will I say Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, the Celtics have only been blown out, like, two or three times all year. So 
Um, you know, even if, even if they lose, like, I think they, they have, they've been in almost every game that they've been in, if not leading. So it should be a good one to watch regardless. For sure. For sure. For sure. Well, no, I appreciate you for coming on the show. Please let our listeners know where they can find you. If you got any upcoming work that we should be on the lookout for. Yeah, I would say Twitter X is the best place to find me. I post like everything there. It's Noah Dalzell NBA. Um, and then, yeah, I write for Celtics blog. So my, all my coverage is there. Awesome. No, appreciate you for coming on the show and shout out to Knicks nation and anybody else. I know there's Celtics fans that tune into the show too, especially when we match up, they all love to be in the comment section and say, Oh, we won, but you never want to talk. You never want to show when you, when you guys lose, especially last season. So thank you all for tuning in for another game of the week preview. Knicks will face the Boston Celtics tomorrow in TD Garden at 730 on TNT tomorrow night. And make sure to hit that thumbs up button for the squad. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFC to get up to a $100 match. And shout out to all the franchise channel members in here right now. Shout out to TM. Shout out to the Chief Mod in operation right now. Uh, shout out to KDOT. Shout out to uh, who else we got in here? We got two lifted in here. Shout out to you. We got Curtis West. Shout out to you as well. We got uh, Janelle Toure. Uh, I hope I'm not uh, butchering your name. Shout out to you as well. Who else do we have here? We have Flyboy Kev. Shout out to you. Shout out to White Lotus. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. Shout out to Jay from Puerto Rico. I see you in here too. Okay, all right. Shout out to Gata. K-Dot. Shout out to Brian Oriante. Shout out to Mr. Dons. All right. Appreciate you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. You already know what to do. All right. We'll catch you guys tomorrow after the Knicks play the Celtics. We out. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Noah, for coming on the show. Appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, sir. Noah, thanks again. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Have a good one. All right. You too. Have a good one, Noah.